Hello and welcome to this week's Type 1 Thursday. Today's topic is something that I have uh, been meaning to do for a long time, but I haven't quite gotten to it. Um, and But it is a very useful tip and trick, so I'm excited. And I wanted to ask you this first. Um, do you perhaps experience frequent hypos? or frequent highs that seem to come out of nowhere. It's not really connected to when you're eating and your basal, and it's not really connected to anything else either. So maybe it is something else. Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Um, and as we all know with diabetes, chances are it could be. What I wanted to say first though is hypos or low blood sugars never ever happen because you're not eating enough food. <laughs> Hypos always, always, always happen because you're taking too much insulin. And that's actually really interesting in this, in this uh, topic because what we're talking about today is uh, the, how to check that your basal settings like your long-acting insulin or basal settings on your pump are correct for you. Not for anyone else, not to compare, never ever compare like um, insulin dosages with anyone else. It's what it is for you if it is correct. And this is really key. Either it's the dose or the timing, if you are an MDI, timing of the basal insulin that could be the problem. So let's figure out what it is and how we do it and all of this stuff when it comes to basal testing. It is such a fun <laughs> topic in the diabetes world, but hey, you know, uh, it needs to be done if you want uh, as good of a control as you can have on your type 1 diabetes. Having your basal set properly <laughs> also helps you bolus correctly for your food, or it makes it a lot easier. That's uh, my point here. <laughs> So basically the point of basal insulin is to keep your blood sugar stable uh, when you're not eating, when you're not exercising, when you're not doing anything, when you're just like, it's just, it works the same in healthy people, the ones that don't need to add insulin from uh, the outside. It is that to keep your blood sugar very, very stable uh, during the whole day when you're not eating, not exercising, not doing anything of the few things that actually help um, taking your blood sugar down or any of the things that uh, any of the 42 or 45 or whatever things that are uh, keeping your blood sugar or can increase your blood sugar. So what is a basal test? Well, it's basically and to determine what your proper basal setting is, whether you are in a pump or taking long acting insulin without food and without uh, bolus then and without exercise. And yeah, that's basically what it is. And how do you do it? Well, trick number one is to start at a normal uh, blood sugar level. Don't start if you're too high, don't start if you're too low to start at a normal. That is the baseline <laughs> of basal testing. You have to start at a, um, at a good blood sugar level. Uh, so you can either do it in two ways. Either you fast a full 24 hours and get it all out of your system and you have it done in one go, or you divide it up on four days and divide the 24 hours into six hour um, increments where you fast for six hours and then check your blood sugars hourly to see um, what happens to them. This is also where a CGM is very, very helpful, although I would not trust it uh, to be exact for all of that. I would also prick my finger a couple of times in those six hours or those 24 hours, just so you can actually see what is doing what. And if you choose to do it in four days, then you do uh, overnight in one go, and then you do a morning uh, session, then you do a day session, and then an evening session, so that you get those 24 hours all checked. Um, and you do this one week, and then the next week you do uh, the same to just double check and, and just fine tune and really tweak your basals, because this is really key for a good blood sugar management. And uh, don't 
eat or have insulin um, four hours before, don't bolus four hours before you start the test. You can have water, you can have herbal tea, anything that's not caffeinated, nothing that will uh, do a number on your blood sugar. So anything that is neutral, you can have that. Um, and don't eat unless you go too low. So if you're having a hypo and don't correct unless you go too high as in yes. So basically if you go too low during your your basal testing, it means that you're take you have too much basal. Uh, you're taking too much uh, basal insulin, whether it is in a pump or injections. Or if you go too high, your basal is too low. So this is how you can uh, sort of check the results on this. And make sure you're not sick or on your period or you know something that you know uh, influences your blood uh, blood sugars from the outside. And it is completely okay to break the test if you have to. If you have a hypo, you have to correct it. It's fine to break it. You just do it another day instead. And the same if you go too high. It's fine to break it, have a bolus. The main point is that you take care of yourself and the basal test it gets done another day instead. Also, one, one very important tip that I uh, almost forgot is to write down the results so you have the results on paper. It makes it a lot more uh, easy to overview instead of having it in some app and you have to like go back and, and then check with pump settings or you know basal. It makes it very complicated. Good old pen and paper works the best in this case, I would say. So, as I said before, if blood sugar drops too much, you're taking too much insulin, uh, you're taking too much basal, if it goes up too high, then you are taking too little and you need to increase it. And if you are an MDI and, some, and you notice something could be better during these 24 hours, perhaps you need to split your dose. This is something you can discuss with your doctor. And if you're on a pump, remember that it's usually the pump, uh, it's usually the basal setting that is about an hour to two hours before that impacts your blood sugars right now. So uh, I, you have to be a little bit flexible in this. That was my very short run through on how to basal test properly. And I want to know from you, when was the last time you basal tested uh, your settings or your dose or timing for that matter? Let me know in a comment below. And I'll be so happy to chat with you there.